Hello YouTube, XCT here, and today we're going to do Real 2 on Hacked Box. Um, this box involves some password spraying, um, sort of a phishing simulation, um, GEA, which is just enough administration, Windows sticky notes, and finally some more PowerShell in the end. So after a port scan, which I already did here, we can see um, ports 8080, 80, and 443 open. So let's have a quick look at these. Nothing here, but we can see it's an IIS server. Nothing here either. So let's look at the last one. And here we can see the wall stand CMS. Um, I'm already logged in because I created an account and uh, logged in. So this is something you have to do. And then you can see um, all the users here on the site, which is pretty interesting because we will need them later on. And other than that, you can see some posts here, um, but there isn't too much uh, valuable information here other than that. So the important thing are the usernames here, really. So I already copied them and put them in this users.txt file, and I combined them in a specific way, which is the first letter of the first name, a dot, and then the last name. Um, you don't know that at this point, so you would have to include different variations, but this is the one that will actually work later on. So where to use these on? Um, what we can do is we can run a quick deer search and just see if we can find any subdirectories. And indeed, there's an OWA subdirectory which is um, very interesting for us. So let's have a look at that one. All right, but it needs a login. So we have some usernames, we have a page um, where we can use them, but we don't have a password. So what we would do is try to spray a couple of easy ones um, and hope that one of the users um, has an easy to guess password, right? So I prepared this list, um, which has just the seasons and some um, year names, year numbers. Um, you can try all sorts of things um, like month names or um, I don't know, other names, uh, word lists and so on. But these um, will be good here. So we just stick with these and they're actually used a lot. So to actually spray these, we're going to use um, Metasploit. So let's search for a module. This one looks good. And we run the module and hope that we get some user that um, has a password we know. And it's a bit hard to see, but we actually had a success here. Um, with this uh, username and this password. So let's log into the OWA now. So we have logged in as user Swen, but um, there aren't any emails here. So this won't help us too much. Um, one interesting thing is that we can um, click at this address book here. and actually see a lot of users. So what we gained is a list of all the users uh, in the domain. And what we can do now is um, basically write an email to everyone. Highlight all of these, minus this uh, mailbox that we don't need. And then we can um, press this button here to write an email to all of them. And as this is essentially um, a phishing simulation, there are many payloads you could try here. Um, you can send a Word document with a macro. You could send um, links to pages you've prepared, um, HDA payloads, um, LNK files. There are a lot of options, really. Um, and in this case, it's a bit simplified because you can just um, give it your IP and I guess some clicker bot will um, just visit it. So we're going to do that. 
But before we send it, we have to think about um, what we really want here. So let's say some script is actually um, visiting this link. Um, what would that help us? Uh, we could prepare a page and host some payload there, but it's unlikely that uh, the script would um, actually execute anything there. So one thing we can do is um, we can um, use responder and hope that the um, user that is, or the, the script that is um, visiting the IP is using NTLM authentication, uh, which we can capture and maybe crack. So let's try that. All right, we are listening. Um, and now let's send the payload and hope that we get some oh actually i made a mistake here i already have a web server listening so i'm going to run it again and after a moment um, we get a request back um, actually i did send it again with an http in front of the ip i'm not sure which of the two requests actually called back um, could be either of them so you probably have to try both um, but yeah um, we actually got a connection, so let's copy that and let's try to crack that hash. Copy that here. Let's um, use John to crack it. And here we got the password of the user, which is uh, kittycat1. And basically what we want to do is um, use this username and the password we got now to connect to the box uh, over WinRM. Um, usually what I do is... Um, I use evil winner, um, which is a really great winner um, shell you can use from Linux. But in this case, it does not work. And although it kind of looks like it has connected, um, we can't execute any commands here. So that's a bit weird. One thing we can do, and there's this article I want to show you. Um, offensive security has this guide how to use um, PowerShell on Kali. And basically that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, I, I think these symbols are no longer needed, but the rest of it works pretty fine. So um, let's try that. Um, change the directory. And then there is this PowerShell command. And now I'm just going to copy what was in the post, basically, um, which is create a new session on the target, provide the password, and then we enter the session. Now, um, one big disadvantage of this method versus um, doing it all in Windows is that this PowerShell connection is awfully slow. So it's really difficult to just try out things without having to wait forever. Um, probably going to speed up that part a bit so you don't get too bored. All right, we are connected. So let's see what we can do. And that didn't work. So what is basically happening here is that we are under this GEA, which I mentioned in the beginning, um, which restricts us from running a lot of commands. Um, and with get command, we can see which ones we can actually run. And this is uh, not a lot. Um, we can't um, basically read any files um, or execute anything you know, or something like that. So it's really restricted. And um, if you encounter this the first time um, and don't know how to deal with it, it can be pretty frustrating. Um, after a while, when... Um, we first did this, um, I came across um, a Stack Overflow post and let me see if I can find it. Yeah, um, here this guy was basically showing a method I haven't seen before this date um, that you can actually read files with this dollar um, bracket uh, syntax and also write content, which is super interesting, right? So what we can do is um, exactly that. And because we know the username already, we can use this to read the user flag right away. And that's also what I did uh, initially. 
And we also saw that we can write, and um, I want to confirm this here. So I'm creating this file with this content. And afterwards, I'm going to read it just to confirm that it was created. And that looks good. So at this point, we have the option to read and write files. So what can we do? Um, after a moment, um, I had the idea that we can basically write to the PowerShell profile. And when a user would log in, at least that was my assumption, um, this profile would get executed. And therefore, our code, um, for example, PowerShell code, we uh, put into the um, profile file. So let's do exactly that. I already prepared this code snippet and it's exactly the same syntax we used before, right? We have this file, um, equal sign, and then what you want to write, uh, which is in this case, um, a reverse shot. Okay, so we've written the profile and the actual payload is just a PowerShell reverse um, one-liner. Um, I don't know where I grabbed this from, probably from payload all the things or something. And now we just wait um, for a connection back. Actually, I thought um, one would have to connect to the box to trigger this, but there seems to be some um, automated script that will actually uh, execute in some interval and trigger it. And maybe while we wait, um, I showed you the intended way, which is a lot easier because um, you can actually um, still define functions like so. And inside a function, you can use um, any command you like. So that way we have defined the function called XCT and we can just um, execute it like that. Um, yeah, that would have been really easy. And now we also got a connection here doesn't seem quite right at this point. Yeah, now it's fully loaded. And yeah, now we got a real shell and have no restrictions um, whatsoever anymore. Okay, um, so let's go here. And let's have a look at these GEA files. And what we see here is um, a role capability, which we want to save. Um, and other than that, there isn't, um, well, there is something interesting here. It's this one. We don't need it right now, but we will need it later. So let's look around a bit more, see if we can find anything interesting. We already went to the desktop to read the flag, but um, actually some more things here. Um, this, this proc explorer and sysmon are not here on default. Um, I guess someone just um, is doing the box at the exact time, time I'm doing it now. So he left it there. So let's look at this um, sticky notes thing. See if we can learn anything. Okay, this is the icon, so we can get some paths from there. So the binary is here. Um, other than that, I don't see anything really interesting here. Let's look at the running processes and we can see that this um, sticky notes is actually running. So um, what you could do, for example, is to take a screenshot and see if it's open on the desktop, right? So um, one thing to do that is to get a Metasploit shell. And this is exactly what I'm trying now. Um, so let's start a multi-handler and um, set a payload. And after we started the listen now, we are going to create a payload, um, msf.exe, which is just a metapreter uh, reverse HTTPS shell. And um, one thing to keep in mind here that this is very likely to get detected. It's just a pure MSF Venom payload, so there's no chance this is not getting picked up by Defender. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually um, use a small tool I've um, written. 
me see if I remember how to use it. Um, first of all, we're going to copy the payload we just generated. And then we're going to run mobile on this file and create a obfuscated one. And what this is actually doing is um, taking the um, executable, um, converting it to shellcode, and then building a Golang wrapper around it so it is um, safe. All right, so we have our file. Let's um, copy this back. All right, now we just have to get it. I'm actually not sure we have a web server running currently, so let's make sure that is really the case. Download the file. And execute it. And after a moment, we indeed get a shell. And yeah, we bypass Defender. So that's good. Also very useful um, for our courses. And now, actually, because we are in a Metasploit, we can use the screenshot function. And let's look at that one. And here we see that we actually got the password of another user. So that was um, a very nice way to get it. Um, there's also another one. Um, originally, I didn't think about the screenshot thing. So there was also a log file somewhere in app data of our user we got. Um, and there, the password also leaked. So we just have to write it down from the screenshot now. And also, we have to remember this JR test account thing, which is basically the profile which we need to specify when we connect. So let's put it all together. So let's connect with this new user we just got. Um, basically, this is the same command we used before, but um, with the small difference as we specify the configuration name, which we saw earlier in the config file. And if we got that, we can just um, copy the password and connect as this user, enter the session. Right, we are connected. So let's check get command again. And we can see that we are pretty restricted again, but um, this time there is, if you look carefully, one additional function. It's this check file function, which we've actually seen before. And just make that a bit bigger. What this function is basically doing is giving us the content of a file, but it's checking um, some things. Uh, for example, that it is in program data or on the D drive. Um, but there is no input initialization uh, here in any kind. So what we can do is a really simple thing. Um, we can run check file on C program data like it wants to, and then we just go back a directory and read the flag. And this gives us the root flag. I don't know if it's possible to get the root shell here. Um, I haven't tried. Um, but basically, that's it for the box. Um, thank you for watching and see you next week.